a Karcher window vac. This is a device that combines a squeegee that you slide down your window and almost like a little mini wet and dry vacuum cleaner that sucks the water into this reservoir in here, which means that when you're cleaning your windows, you can spray them, give them a clean, but then you can dry them almost instantly with this thing. And this was sent by Chris and Mandy. Uh, to take a look at and they sent it some time ago but just because it ended up in the bottom of a big pile of stuff I've not had a look at it yet but I am having a look now so the problem with this is that it wasn't taking a charge and it comes to this little charger that puts out well let's uh, just see what it puts out 5.5 volts at 600 milliamps and looking at the uh, specifications on this unit here it suggests that it's got a, a lithium cell in it, in it and the charger's working okay and I hotwired it. I stuck some uh, voltage onto the input charging port to see what sort of current it was taking. And it was hovering about 12 or 20 milliamps, but it didn't really go any further than that after a long period of time. So I'm guessing that possibly the lithium battery protection is sort of cut in. So let's take this to bits. So the end of it comes off. The bottle comes off, the reservoir for the fluid. It's worth mentioning that it seems to draw the air up inside here. Um, and it's got this level, this maximum level, which is designed for this, what would you call that, a little... It's got a pipe going down inside that just stops, almost like a little sort of inverted snorkel in here that just uh, allows it to deposit the water in here, but you have to avoid going above the max level, or theoretically it could start sucking into the pump. Let's get these bits out of the way. It also comes with various other attachments. So let's take the screws out. Now, I have to say, I've already looked out the correct screwdriver, but I'm not sure how long it's going to take, take these out. Let's uh, start taking them out. I had to hybrid two screwdrivers. I had to use the uh, Weira screwdriver, one a part of a kit that was sent by Jake a while back. Um, and I had to hybrid it with a, another screwdriver set that had the right bit, because uh, if I use a standard miniature screwdriver, the shaft diameter is too much to actually go down into these. I'm seeing this, uh, I may end up uh, finding there is one hole it doesn't quite reach the bottom of and then I'll uh, have to improvise other ways, but so far, and so far it's all going to plan. That is usually a bad sign, it usually means it's about to go horribly non to plan. It's worth mentioning the switch at the tip is just a sort of clicky switch, it's not a click on, click off. I think this is the deepest one here. Is this going to reveal anything or is it going to still have hurdles in our path? Hmm. I'm thinking that there may be something else to stop this coming off. Is there something I don't know about here? The screws are all out. I don't see anything obvious here. I don't want to start forcing it, although I may end up forcing it. I don't think this module clips off, but I could be wrong. There is a sort of, almost like a wedge up here. I wonder if that's some locking mechanism. I shall persist, but if it doesn't uh, liberate its, its interior secrets, uh, within a short time I'll pause momentarily while I take it to bits. Hopefully it won't be too destructive. Hmm. That is not really inspiring confidence. I wonder if there's hidden screws under here and a sort of plastic sleeve that comes on. Nothing obvious. Right, tell you what, I'm going to pause momentarily. It's off. It turns out there's a clip at the back here that once you've unclipped, let's see if I can clip this on then unclip it again. Am I going to be able to do that? Uh, possibly not. Uh, but... How did, how did that clip on? Oh, I see how it went. Uh, so it turns out there's a clip at the back, and if you pull this clip out, it sort of hinges down. I've just clipped it on again completely, haven't I? Yes, right here. It clips on thoroughly, that's what we need to know. I'm suddenly regretting clipping that back together now, because it has thoroughly clipped on. Okay. We'll tell you what, let's uh, part this and see if that sort of prizes it off. Uh, see, yeah, I, I shouldn't have done that, should I? Having unclipped it, I thought I'd show you how it unclips and that ain't happening. Is that going to do it? Oh, one moment, please. 
Right, it's these knotty clips at the bottom. It really is clipped on quite tightly. You have to get spudgers down and prise it out in all directions to get it off. As is so common to many plastic devices these days. Once that has happened, the two plastic, yellow plastic shells separate quite easily, revealing a core that lifts out. That's quite neat. So I'll get rid of the yellow plastic bits. And from here I'm seeing what looks like the, a standard 18650 cell in here. Looking for screws and I'm not seeing screws. I'm seeing clips. So uh, this bit clips off. There's the impeller that uh, blows the air out sideways when this spins. And it's drawing the air down this core here and then expelling it out the front of the unit just behind the little plastic liquid uh, cartridge thing that clips in. Um, and when you clip that cartridge in, there's actually, you'll see there's little vent, hole, vent slots at the side. What now? Um, I can see a couple of clips at the bottom. Let's uh, liberate those clips. And see if this actually parts. It's kind of parting. It's kind of sealed. Oop. We have a slightly corroded 18650. It's not looking like it. It looks like maybe water's got down into this. Which isn't really surprising when you consider the nature of the device. It's got interesting seals put in here to try and prevent that, which they've done a fairly good uh, job of, but it looks like the water has got down in round about the side of the motor, or might actually have gone down the inside of the seal in the motor. The motor is physically wired in here with a little circuit board in the back. The lithium cell, I'm guessing that its voltage is going to be in the region of, it's going to be less than about 2.5 possibly, because it certainly wasn't taking a charge and it looks like some protective circuitry has kicked in for that. Let's set this to 20 volts. Positive to there, negative to there. It's showing 1.7 volts, which is quite low for the lithium cell. Um, I wonder if that's the protection circuit has just said basically because it's gone down below its lower voltage, it's just not going to allow it to be charged again. The corrosion appears to be mainly, well that corrosion is between the end there. I wonder if it's gone from the positive onto the casing. Although there is corrosion here as well, maybe it's just those contacts are prone to corrosion. The circuitry, tell you what, I'm going to remove the cell. I'll just pause momentary, momentarily while I do that. A closer look at the circuitry reveals that it's fairly typical. It's what you'd expect. They're using a microcontroller to control the system. It's an AT Tiny 841 they're using. There's an international rectifier uh, MOSFET here. It's the standard 8-pin MOSFET with one connection going to four pins on one side, three pins on the other side, and then the signal cable. There's a quite odd this. It's got a um, TS four three one CS, which is I believe that's a precision voltage reference, and they're possibly using that to detect overcurrent threshold because the battery which connects to these two connections here, uh, the current goes through this resistor, and that's possibly being used. Well, it almost certainly is being used as a sense resistor to determine, by measuring the voltage across this, they can determine how much current's flowing the circuit. And if the motor stalls or something goes wrong, they can shut that off. There is a diode here across the two connections to the motor. And on the input here, and the connector's quite interesting here, they've got a diode for polarity protection going from one of the connections. I'm guessing that's a positive going through the diode before it goes down and charges the circuitry. The... Charging of the circuitry, that's one bit I didn't see. There is a little six-pin component here, but it's very vague. It's just got WF printed on it. It's very, very small. I'm not sure exactly what is doing the charging here. Unless they're using this precision voltage reference for a, to detect a, a, an end of charge situation, but I thought they'd probably have used a dedicated component for the charging. There is always a possibility that something is tucked up here and hidden out of sight because this is all fairly densely moulded together. Oh, you know what? Is that... No, that's just a, another... Trin oh, no, that is. That's the charging circuit up there. Uh, one moment, I'm just going to see if I can get a number off that. 
it's tucked right in under the connector. RZMT. Okay, not familiar with RZMT, but there is a little component just tucked under here under this cable that says RZMT, and it's presumably charge control. I'd guess that, just because many of these little charging circuits use that little style of chip. Bit of corrosion round here at the top in the diode as well. Um, I'm guessing that possibly charge and status indication is going up this cable. It's the cable, there's a couple of interesting things. If you look at the cable sort of going through the connector here, the connector has been designed specifically for the task and it's got strain relief. Well, it's got a cable guide and support just dedicated for that little three wire ribbon cable. And also when you get up to the actual connector itself, well, the actual switch, they've got the housing, the clear housing and a cover over the switch, but then the black rubber has been injection molded around that to actually give it a good finish, but also to seal it because it comes right down and goes around the cables here. That is quite well sealed together. Was quite well sealed together. Now it is not sealed together. It's a switch. It's a, it's an LED. Is it just one LED? I wonder if there's two chips in there. I think it might just be a single LED. There's one way to find out, and that is to energize the LED by switching my meter to diode and continuity test and see if I can actually make it light in either polarity. So what connection is going to be what here? Nothing. I don't know if this is going to be sealed with a sort of waterproof coating on it. It might have a thin layer of lacquer to try and protect it against uh, stuff. Oh, I'm not getting that LED to light. I've got a feeling there is a, a coating in this to try and uh, protect it. And uh, the connections to the LED are just really just... The one end is accessible, the other end is tucked in. No, can't really get access to that. Oh, not to worry. Actually, you know what? Do you know what? It might have worked better if I'd turned the meter on. Yeah, that would have worked better. Let's try. It's a green LED. But does it have polarity reversal? Is it a dual colour? No, it's just a single colour by the look of it. Okay, that's reasonable enough. I don't think there's a indicator anywhere else on the board. Round the connector maybe? No, I don't see any LEDs. So uh, it's more or less textbook what you'd expect. It's got the microcontroller, it's got the switch for the motor, it's got the diode to protect, it's got the voltage reference for sensing across a presumably then the sense resistor. It's got the charge circuit and then just a smattering of support components to actually control everything. But what has happened here ultimately, it's the curse of all devices that use water in their operation, is that water has got down, it's got inside and this battery... When I desoldered it, the corrosion, it, you can actually see a pile of the debris here, the rust, particularly where the positive connection had been in the vicinity of presumably through the housing here. Let's take that off and check. The battery voltage, incidentally, I've given it a charge. It is holding. It's not really dropping significantly, so it seems to be intact. Let's try and uh, peel some of this cover off with a kniff and see what sort of state it's in down here. Let's take a look and see if the corrosion has affected, has actually created a continuous bridge there, or if it's just been where in the vicinity of that connection. It's fairly clean. You can see a little bit of the corrosion down about the seal there. I'm not going to poke the screwdriver in. That would just be tempting fate here. This should have seen the knife. You can see a little bit of the corrosion in there, but it does look like it has just been bridging across. It's had a little wick of water has just sat in there and caused corrosion between the positive and the negative, and it's drained that battery down quite low. So there we go. I'm guessing maybe then that the microcontroller might cut out. It certainly didn't seem to be taking a charge. It's possible then that the charge is being shunted through that corrosion. It may maybe formed a conductive bridge, although um, when I took it out, there was still a voltage in the cell. Unless the because there's corrosion in the top here, it may actually have caused issues with the um, the components in the vicinity of the charge circuitry. 
So there we go. It's certainly worth knowing that you can, if, supposing you've got one of these and it doesn't get water in it, I, I should say they've tried, they've done a lot to try and keep the water out. They've got this sort of double injection moulding here. Another thing that's worthy about that, worthy mentioning about that is that that moulding goes down to also has a battery support frame to actually act as a shock absorber and support and sort of alignment for the battery down there. That's quite nice. They've got that on both sides. So it's quite a nice design. It's well engineered. They've tried to keep the water out, but as always happens to these things, once water gets down, it will find its way in anywhere, particularly if the units are left sitting for a while with water inside of them. What can you ultimately do? A bit of strain relief on the wires. That's about all I can really say about this. It's a shame, but it's just uh, it's just the very nature of uh, devices like this. Water gets in no matter what you do.